What is up guys, LCA Recording Studios here. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this awesome YouTube subscribe button in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so now that we have Resolve open, I'm gonna to wanna to go over to the edit page, right click in this media pool area, say new fusion composition, name it whatever you want, I'm gonna Call it subscribe button. Create, click and drag it into your timeline. I'm just gonna drag it out until it's about 10, 10 ish seconds there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now that I have this selected, I'm gonna go into the fusion page. First thing we're gonna wanna do is bring in a background node. Come up here in your toolbar, this is a background. Type it in to the media out one. Okay, so with this background selected, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go up to the inspector, um, bring the alpha all the way down. So you get this checkerboard, which means that it's transparent. And so this is gonna be important later on when we're rendering, rendering out the video and we can render it out, put this over another clip that we have and then see the animation here and then as well as the clip behind it. Okay, so next, bring in another background node right about there. Go up into the inspector, change the color, something that looks nice and YouTube-y. So now I'm gonna merge this over the background one node here so that we can see it. Obviously, this is not what we want because it's taking up the full screen. Just go select the background to hit this rectangle mask icon right there. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like a subscribe button. So, um, the subscribe button, usually the corners are rounded a little bit more. So I'll take my rectangle, go up to the inspector, adjust this corner radius until I find something that look, looks nice. Don't want it done too much. Right about there, about the 0.417 mark, that looks pretty good. So now that I have that, I'm actually gonna disconnect the background from this merge one so that we don't really see this happening bring in a text node down here and then I'm going to take the output of this and put it over the output of the background too and that'll automatically create a merge node right there. Select the text node, go up to the inspector, in all caps say subscribe. I'm going to merge this merge two again over the top of this. So obviously that's, this text needs to be a little bit bigger so we can either bring a transform node in and then adjust the scale based on that or we can just go up into the node itself and then just just adjust the size a little bit like that and then we can adjust this rectangle so that it kind of matches that all right so now that i have this i'm just going to move things around here uh, move the media out over like that and then i'm actually going to move this over because i don't want this at the very back of my timeline i'm just going to move it over so that it's kind of towards the front there next thing i'm going to want to do is animate this subscribe button coming in. I'm gonna select my merge two, hit shift space on my keyboard, type, type in XF, so that we have the transform. You can see that when we move things, move this around, move this transform node around, it moves the subscribe button with it. And so that's basically combining the text and this background one um, into one thing that we can move um, together instead of independently. We're at frame zero here, so since I want it to come in from the left, I'm gonna drag it off the screen so that it kind of whips into place. And then I'm gonna go to the inspector, put a keyframe on the center X, center Y. And I'm gonna go forward about uh, 10, 10 or so frames maybe, and have it whip into place. I can actually go into my inspector and I know that it starts at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for the X and Y coordinates. So I'm just gonna type that in and that'll be right in the middle like that. So actually with this selected, I'm gonna hit Command C on my keyboard and Command B right after that, which will make this new um, node tree, if you will, um, right next to it. And this is the same as this. So I'm gonna take this merge, hit Shift until you see this like yellow and blue line come up. And then you can check that it's there by moving around a little bit. Um, gonna rejoin the transform into that. I'm gonna go back up to the text. I'm gonna change this to say subscribed 
we could actually take this text node and shrink it down a little bit so that it fits. And then I want to adjust this background color to be something gray. So like after you click it, it'll turn gray on YouTube. And so we want to kind of give that impression. I'm going to go to my color palette here and then just select something. So but now what we have is this subscribed button coming in from the left side of the screen, which is not really what we want. I'm actually gonna take this merge node and then add a rectangle mask to it. What this will do is basically mask out this node and this node only, or this um, subscribed button. And so you can see that not all that's being shown right now, so we can make this a little bit longer, like so. And then I'm actually gonna move this up so that it kind of like wipes away and you can only see the subscribe button now. So that's kind of what we want where it comes in. And then I think the animation ends at frame nine. So go forward a few frames, maybe to frame, I don't know, 17 or 18. I'm gonna click on this rectangle node and then we can actually change the center X, center Y of this too to make it kind of animate coming down from the top of the screen. So if we hit a keyframe and go forward, like a couple frames and we can just drag this down a little bit you can see that kind of wipes into place and so that's kind of the effect that we want here so we have the subscribe button and then it kind of wipes down into the subscribe look kind of make it look like it was being pressed so just real quick so that it doesn't cause any problems later i'm going to go to this merge one and then just so that nothing weird happens later as soon as this wipes down it is done Go to the inspector and then where it says blend here, I'm gonna hit a keyframe, go forward one frame and bring it all the way down. So this will make sure that it's invisible for anything else later in the timeline and we don't have to do um, any animation if we're moving things around. Okay, so next for the bell icon, um, I kind of want it to like, the subscribe button to move over a little bit and then kind of reveal the bell behind it. I think that'd be kind of cool. So I'm gonna bring in this clip art bell that I found on Pixabay. Huge shout out to this artist, by the way, saved us a lot of work so that we didn't have to make that in the program. Um, link in the description for this asset. But um, anyways, huge shout out to them. They are what made this project possible, so make sure you go check them out. Okay, so click and drag, bring this image into your workspace like this. And we're actually gonna to wanna to do something a little bit unusual here. So we're gonna bring, wanna bring in a background like this. We're actually gonna to wanna to use this image as um, a mask for this background, if that makes sense, so that we can change it to any color that we want. So if we merge this over, we kinda of see what it looks like. And you'll see that it has this background color but the only catch with it is that it looks kind of weird because like half part of it is like cut off. Um, and that's because this background node is a different dimension than this media in. And so we could take the background, go over to image, um, uncheck this auto resolution box because that won't let you edit anything based on your current timeline settings. And I know that the dimensions of this image from the Pixabay thing, it told me the dimensions were 1248 by 1280. So if we do that now, we have the entire bell in there and nothing is cut off. And so obviously we're gonna wanna make this a little bit smaller. So background, sh shift spacebar, XF, add a transform node in, and then we can just scale it down to something that looks comparable to the subscribe button. Okay, so now that we have that, the reason that we did that whole shebang where we took this and use this as a mask for this background so, so, that, so that we could change the color of this vector image here. So I'm gonna go to my background, hit color, and then change it to something that's maybe a little bit lighter than this one here. So maybe something like aluminum would look good. So now we just need to animate it. So like I said, I want the subscribe button to kind of move out of the way and reveal this bell. And so I'm gonna take this transform node, move it over like so, and then just scale it down to make sure that nothing's like peeking over the edges from the subscribe button. That's good, that's what we want. It's behind the subscribe button, but obviously you'll notice as this is coming in, it's already there, which is what we don't want. And so we're gonna take this merge node, do the same thing that we did with the subscribe button earlier, take the blend, set a keyframe, 
bring it all the way down and then go forward until the subscribe button has wiped across the screen. Set another keyframe, hold one frame, and bring the blend all the way up so that when this moves aside this time, it'll kind of reveal itself there. Okay, so now we just need to animate the subscribe button itself moving over. Uh, click on my transform node right here. So around frame 44, that looks like it'll work. I'm gonna hit keyframe on the center X, center Y, and then go forward a few frames so that it's over here. And you'll notice that it's starting to get cut off here, and that's because of this rectangle mask. And it doesn't really matter how long it is, and so we can make it as long as we want so that that doesn't happen. All we have to do now is animate the like button. So I'm gonna bring that in. I got this like button from a user on Pixabay. There'll be links down below, but they didn't have any fill for it, so I just took it into Inkscape, added some fill color so that you could it would stand out more, and then um, cropped it a little bit so that it would fit better into our timeline. You can download that at the link down below in the description. Just go click and drag it into my timeline like we did before. So now that we have this, we're gonna to wanna to take a background node, pipe this into it so that we're using it as a mask just like this one, and I'm just gonna copy the color by coming over here, picking color, and then if you don't remember what color you used from earlier, you can just take this little eyedropper. This might be a Mac only thing, I'm not sure. Take the eyedropper and then just copy the color of that. Now when we merge it over, it should have that same color. Now the dimensions for this, so that nothing gets cut off, we're just gonna go to background, uh, click on this, go to image, uncheck auto resolution, and then type in 2236 by 1080, and then that will make sure that nothing is cut off. Okay, so now that we have this selected, shift spacebar XF to add your transform node, scale it down a little bit so that it's comparable to the size of this bell. Okay, so for this like button that we have here, um, I wanted to kind of do a similar thing as this bell. We can have the subscribe button going to the left, and then as it's moving to the left, we can have this kind of slide out to the right so that it moves into its position over here so that the subscribe button will be revealing this bell and kind of the thumb will be sliding out from it at the same time. I'm going to go back to the frame where the subscribe button started moving. So for me, that's frame 44. Um, I'm just going to slide it over a little bit, scale it down so, that's nothing, so that nothing's peeking out. Pick uh, the keyframe on center X, center Y, move forward until the subscribe button stops moving, move it over to the right. So now we're going to have to do the same thing that we did for the subscribe button to give the impression that it was clicked, that kind of sliding down motion that we had at the beginning of our timeline. So I'm going to take this, control C, control V to paste it. Take this merge node, shift, drag it onto this line so that it highlights like that. Pipe it back in, and then now we just have the same thing. So I'm going to change the background color to something that looks like it was clicked, so maybe like a light blue. Click on merge, rectangle mask, and then we can click and drag it up and move it over. We have the animation, thumb moves out to the edge of the screen. And we're going to wait for a few seconds. At frame 63, I'm going to click on this rectangle and tell it that at this frame we want it to stay there and then a few frames later we want it to wipe into place. And that's pretty much it for the bulk of our animations. At the end though I kind of want it to I can just have it move up a little bit and then like whip down into the bottom of the screen so that it gives us a nice little outro for it. So we can just leave it like this for the majority of our timeline and then maybe at around frame 205 we can add a transform node, click shift, drag it into our timeline. Now this, since it's in front of everything, will let us move everything that we have in the timeline around like that. Obviously we're gonna have it start at 0.5, set the keyframe, move forward a few frames, maybe to frame 210, and then we're just gonna have it like move up a little bit actually, so that it gives the appearance of it kind of like hopping up before it whips down into the bottom of the screen. And then we're just gonna have it go until frame 217, and then we take this transform node, move everything down out of sight. And so that's it, you guys. That's all the animations that we have to do for this. Now, it looks okay, but it looks maybe a little bit boring because there's no motion blur and the animations just kind of snap into place. But before we forget and, do, and add any of those things, 
I can see that when the subscribe button's moving in, the like button is obviously there. And so fix that, uh, go over, adjust the blend, just like we did with the bell so that, that we didn't see it when it was coming in. Go forward until this wipes down, set another two frame, go forward one frame, bring the blend all the way up. So now to do all those fun things that I said we were going to, like add motion blur and make the animations a little bit nicer, uh, we're just gonna wanna go to all the transform nodes, just come over, click on our inspector, go to settings, and click on this motion blur tab right here. And then I like to do something like quality six and then the sh shutter angle about 151. And I just think that looks the nicest. And so we can just go through to all these transform nodes and then add motion blur just like we described. Okay, so now that we have that, it looks pretty snazzy. Just to make the animations a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother, we can go up to the spline panel up here in the top corner of your screen. And then what this is, is it basically gives you a visual representation of all the animations happening in your composition here. And so if we check on everything, you can see that this line shows that, shows that there's no animations happening right here. Um, we can check on everything and see the animations that ha is happening with each of these. Once we have that, we can click on this arrow here in this box, and that'll just zoom everything out so that we can see all the animations that are going on within our timeline and then select everything, hit F on your keyboard, and then that'll just flatten out the curves. You can see up here that it's straighter in the middle, it's curved at the top. And so basically what this means is that it'll be going faster here in the middle and then slow down before it reaches the end so that it's not just snapping into place. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Fusion composition itself. Now, if you're gonna want to use this in multiple projects, the reason that we started with this as an alpha background or a transparent background here, and so that we could put this animation in front of a video clip so that we can see the video clip and the animation at the same time. And so we can render it like this just so that you can bring it into the timeline and you don't need to copy this fusion composition every single time. So there's a few settings we need to use in order to do that. So we need to change our format to QuickTime here if it's not already done on that. Um, Codec, you want to go down to GoPro Cineform, type RGB 16 bit, and then now you can see that there's an export alpha box down here. This is all the settings we need to render it out with the transparent background. And so we can give it a file name, choose a location for it, and then add it to your render queue. So now that we have that rendered version of it, we can just click and drag it into our project here. Take something like a four color gradient, bring it in, and then we can right click, add another video track, take this subscribe button animation that we made, put it over the four color gradient that we have, and now we can see that this subscribe button animation comes in over the top of it. Now if we want to scale this down, pretty easy. All we do is select this little box here down in the bottom left corner of your viewer, select the box, and size that down. We can like move it into the corner of the screen so that's not so big and distracting. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. That was how we made this subscribe button graphic inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any suggestions on videos to do in the future, I would love to do those for you. So let me know down in the comments down below. Have a great day and make sure to like and subscribe.